What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another lesson. I'm Miss Wager, and we are going to jump right in to lesson 13 today. Our learning intentions. We are learning to use text evidence so that we can explain what happened in a historical text. If you haven't noticed, this text is all about history, right? So we know we are successful when we can use text evidence to answer questions based on the text and then explain what happened in these historical texts. Like what was going on, right? So for foundational skills today, you have a fluency read. And in this read, you are focusing on our Latin roots, struct, scrib, and scrip. So remember that struct means to build and scrib and scrip mean to write. So your fluency read is called the plays, the plays the thing. And so the words that have those roots are construction, describing, description, instructions, instructor, and script. So take your time and have fun with that read. For vocabulary, we have the word quill. And a quill is just a hollow, sharp spines of a porcupine, hedgehog, or other spiny mammal. So you can see we have our porcupine here, and then we have just a picture of the quills. Our next word is custom. So it says children in the Spirit Lake learn the Dakota language and the traditional customs and beliefs of the people. Now I included this picture of people on the 4th of July because celebrating the 4th of July with fireworks is sort of traditional US custom. So that is a traditional way of behaving or doing something that's particular to a particular society, place, or time. So if you went to like say Australia, they're not going to be celebrating the 4th of July like we are here in the United States. So, like I said, our learning intention today is that we are learning to explain events that happen in a historical text. So, Three Native Nations is an informational and historical text. It gives information about major events of the past. We need to use this text, the text evidence, to explain the events that are described in the text. So, we're going to focus on this throughout our reading today. So, this is a skill that we're going to work through throughout our reading with all of our stop and think questions is really using that text evidence, which you know is my favorite thing. So, let's continue reading. Women had a wide range of, of tasks. They removed the hides from the buffalo and other animals and prepared the meat. They turned the hides into clothing, such as buffalo robes or deerskin dresses. They cut meat into long strips and dried it in the sun. They turned buffalo hides into covers for their teepees. Women also gathered fruits and vegetables throughout the summer and fall. The women sewed colored porcupine quills and beads into beautifully patterned clothing. They, all, they were also responsible for packing when the group needed to move. They pulled down the teepee and loaded them onto the movable platforms called travoy called travois for moving from one place to another. Then they put the teepees up again at the new camp. So our stop and think question, how did the Sioux women turn the buffalo hides into clothing? All right, let's look back in the text. So it says, they turned the hides into clothing such as buffalo robes or deerskin dresses. So that's our first step. And then it goes on to talk about some other things that they did with the animals, but then it also tells us that they sewed colored porcupine quills and beads into the beautiful patterns on clothing. So how do they turn into clothing? Well, they use the hides and then they also sewed porcupine quills and beads onto the clothing as well. Children were raised by everyone in the village. Boys played games to learn hunting skills and they watched the herds of horses. Girls helped their mother sew, cook, and clean, but they also played with dolls and sang with other girls. All children learn by watching their parents and listening to the stories of the elders. The coming of the horses. Along with the harm caused by the arrival of the Europeans, the Lakota received some things that greatly improved their lives. These benefits included, included metal tools and guns, but nothing improved the lives of the Lakota as much as the horse. Horses arrived in Mexico with the Spanish. Because of their small size, these horses were called ponies. With the ponies, the Lakota could travel faster and carry more goods. The teepees could be larger. Most important of all, they could hunt buffalo more successfully. They immediately had more food and more buffalo skins. Before the horses, the Lakota traveled with what they could carry themselves or on travois. Travois were made from poles covered with hides to make carriers for goods. 
After the arrival of horses, the poles were strapped to ponies. Ponies with travois meant more dried food could be carried. Before the horse, the Lakota struggled to survive. After the horse, they enjoyed greater wealth and power than ever before. So let's stop and think. How did the Lakota originally get the horses? Well, it says right here in the second paragraph, what does it say? Right, that the horses arrived in Mexico with the Spanish. So that's how they got them is that the Spanish ended up bringing them over. And then how did horses help the Lakota? What's one thing that the horses helped the Lakota with? Right, so you could say um, that it helped them to hunt the buffalo more successfully. And then we also talked about how they could carry more things and move things more easily with the help of the horses. The Lakota, Dakota, and Nakota today. There are more than 15 reservations for Sioux people in the United States. The communities living on reservations are often very poor and suffer social problems. Very few of the children graduate from high school. Many of the people have left the reservations to try and find work. However, the Spirit Lake Nation in North Dakota has been buying land since 1960. The people there are trying to recover the traditional ways of their traditional ways of life. The Dakota now have more than 245,000 acres of land. Wildlife, including the buffalo, have been reintroduced. Children in Spirit Lake learn the Dakota language and traditional customs and beliefs of the people. So it says here, a Lakota teacher teaches the Lakota language to a high school students. This is one of the few public school Lakota language um, classes in the nation. And here this map is showing um, all the present day Sioux reservations. So it's showing where they live. And then a powwow celebration at Standing Rock Reservation in North Dakota is this main picture. My question is what events are happening in the Spirit Lake Nation in North Dakota today? So let's see, right here in this third paragraph, they are talking about the Spirit Lake Nation. So it says that they've been buying land since the 1960s. They are trying to um, recover their traditional ways of life. And it says that they have reintroduced wildlife onto their land and that the children are also learning the traditional customs and the language of the people. We are practicing today explaining events. So we are going to practice more by looking back at the first pair of the two paragraphs on page 26. In these paragraphs, the author explains the tasks performed by the Sioux women. And these tasks were events in the women's lives. So when we're thinking about explaining events, let's explain what things the Sioux women did. But remember, it says women had a wide range of tasks. They removed hides from buffalo and other animals and prepared the meat. They turned the hides into clothing such as buffalo robes or deerskin dresses. They cut meat into long strips and dried it in the sun. They turned buffalo hides into covers for their teepees. Women also gathered fruits and vegetables throughout the summer and fall. The women sewed colored porcupine quills and beads onto the beautiful patterns of clothing. They also, they were also responsible for packing when the group needed to move. They pulled down the teepees and loaded them onto movable platforms called travois for moving them from one place to another. They then put the teepees up again at the new camp. So we're gonna think when we're explaining events, well, what do the women do? I could just say simply that they performed many tasks. It said that right there in the text in like the first sentence, women had a wide range of tasks. So they did lots of things. And so now I want to think of some examples of things that they did to support that. So let's think. It says right here that they removed the buffalo and they prepared the meat. So they prepared the food. They cut the meat into the long strips and dried it in the sun. So I could say that they prepared the food. That was one of their jobs. So let's look for something else. Oh, they also made clothing, right? that talked about how they took the buffalo hides and the deer skins to make clothing, and they also um, used the porcupine quills to decorate them. Also, it said that they had to pack up whenever they needed to move, and they also were responsible for cleaning. And then lastly, like we just said with the making the clothing, they sewed the quilts and the beads onto the clothing. Those are all things that were described on that one page. So for your reading response today, I want you to answer this question. 
how did the arrival of horses change daily life for the Lakota? We already talked about this a little bit, so you should have a good idea to get you started. Be sure to answer in complete sentences and use details from the text. That is part of our success criteria for today, is that we are using text evidence. All right, that is all for today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Do all of your work, be kind to one another, and I will see y'all later. Bye.